Ed seemed to know something that all of us do not know, or he had somehow recovered a knowledge that the ancient Egyptians had, and this is the only rational explanation for the 1100 tons of coral that now resides in Homestead, Florida. He always said that he had the secrets of anti-gravity and magnetic fields, and he also said that he knew how they built the pyramids. So it appears if he was telling the truth that uh, it looks like he did have these secrets. Here is a picture of the sundial, which you can see is labeled here, and I will get back to the significance of these figure eights that you see depicted. In the research done on many megalithic sites, the alignment of structures seems to be of great importance to the builders. The Great Pyramid, specifically, each of its sides faces and is aligned with the cardinal points, north, south, east, and west, with an error from true north of only one twelfth of a degree. The work of many researchers, including Robert Bouval, have shown that many ancient structures were also aligned with constellations, including the three pyramids of Giza at the Giza complex, which were aligned with the three belt stars in the constellation Orion. In regard to Ed, he went to a great deal of trouble to align the Polaris telescope so perfectly that a person standing from the north wall peering through the eyepiece would see the star Polaris. This amazing engineering feat done by a man with a fourth grade education led him to creating what is now called the sundial. The sundial seems to show figure eights that line the interior of this concave artifact. Ed had told visitors that he used it to tell time, remarking that only the hours between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. were important because those were the hours that a man should work, and he was not interested in any other hours. The hours were marked over the figure eights, each representing, purportedly, an hour of the day. Through my research, I have discovered that the figure eights that are shown are actually not figure eights at all, but actually represent an astronomical representation of the path that the sun takes through the sky. It is called an analemma. An analemma can be found on virtually any globe of the world. Essentially, the sun follows this path through the sky throughout the year, depending upon your location on the earth. It is also dependent upon the 23.5 degree tilt of the Earth's axis and the elliptical orbit that the Earth follows around the Sun. Ed Lead Skaldin stated in his book Magnetic Current that astronomers did not know what really caused the seasons. He also claimed that science was wrong in regard to gravity and electricity and that what he had discovered using his Polaris telescope as represented on his sundial would help scientists redefine science and also understand the true path that the Earth follows in its orbit around the Sun. 
It is my opinion that Ed was not stating that the Earth follows a figure eight pattern around the Sun, as represented by the analemma, but that the path as represented by the analemma reveals that at certain times of the year, based upon our orbit around the Sun and our alignment with the Moon and other planets in the solar system, creates windows of opportunity by which the power that he used to do the miraculous was easier to access and utilize. My name is R. L. Poole. Today we will be discussing Lee Skolan astronomy, what it is and what it proves in contradiction to modern science. I'll refer to my notes here. Ed went to great pains to leave information behind for us. If only we would try to see and understand. In one case, he specifically says that we should look at the drawing on the red door, the Polaris telescope, and the sundial, and see how they would affect science. I've done that, and I think I believe I know why. In the tradition of Eratosthenes, Leeds Golan has used celestial markers like sticks in the ground to prove his conclusions. For those of you who are not familiar with Eratosthenes, I'll share just a little bit about him. He was a mathematician and an astronomer who lived about 2,500 years ago. He was from Greece. He was able to prove that the Earth was round and approximately how big it was using technology no more sophisticated than two sticks, if you can believe that. He placed a stick in the ground near the Aswar Dam in southern Egypt and noted that on the summer solstice the stick would cast no shadow. However, he knew on the same day in his hometown of Alexandria the stick would cast a significant shadow. This is not what you would expect on the surface, uh, on a flat surface, but exactly what you would expect on a sphere. Uh, next, he measured the uh, angle of the sun in the sky and realized that the sticks were exactly one fiftieth of a complete circle. Knowing the distance between the two cities and multiplying by 50 gave him approximately the circumference of the Earth. He said that the Earth was 24,662 miles around. It's actually 24,901 miles around. He was off by 239 miles, or less than 1% of the true circumference of the Earth. Ed has done something similar, only his sticks are celestial alignments, which, uh, in, re in relation to the Earth, to discover how the Earth moves through space. First, let's talk about the red door. He shows approximately what I have here. Uh, he has the sun, and then he has the earth, and the number 21 here. And he is showing that the earth is on an angular orbit in relation to the sun. He's showing that during the summer solstice on 621, the earth is closest to the sun. Then he shows the earth at the other extreme, when we are the farthest from the sun during the winter solstice on 1221. He is showing that our pole does not shift with the obliquity currently believed, but instead that the earth revolves at an angle to the sun which is constant, and that the distance and position of the earth in relation to this orbit causes the seasons, and not the tilting of our axis as we revolve in a flat stereo orbit, which is the modern belief. Modern astronomy believes that we are in a flat, circular, stereo orbit around the Sun and that the Earth turns on an axis which is different than our angle to the Sun and that the Earth's axis moves 23.5 degrees in one direction and 23.5 degrees back the other way which supposedly causes the seasons. Now let's look at the Polaris telescope that Ed's built. On any clear night the North Star can be seen through the telescope year-round. Looks approximately like this. We're going to do a rough sketch here. And any night of the year the Polaris Telescope, you can look through it and you can see the North Star in one of these four quadrants. But I have to tell you that the Polaris Telescope is not actually a telescope. It simply does not match the definition of a telescope. What it does match, however, is the definition of a sextant. And what a sextant does is it marks the position of a star in the sky. But he hasn't even done that. What he has done is mark the position of true north. The North Star is not perfectly north, it's off by about two degrees. In the Polaris Telescope, the North Star rotates from quadrant to quadrant in a small counterclockwise circle throughout the year. The reason is because Polaris is a circumpolar star, rotating around the north, 
true north, which Ed has marked very accurately with the crosshairs. He's found absolute north and marked it with such precision that Polaris can be seen moving around it. Now what was his purpose for doing this and what does it prove? If the Polaris telescope marks absolute north and is correct all the time, all year long, he's proven that our axis does not shift at all during the year, as is currently believed, or else our north pole would constantly change from one place to another, from one star to another, but it doesn't. Our north pole stays the same all the time. If the Earth's axis does not change, then it is the relative position to the Sun that has to be what changes throughout the year, hence the drawing on the red door. Now the sundial. Lee's call in sundial is different from any other sundial known for many reasons. First of all, it's an analomatic sundial, which is not unique, but it is on a curved surface which is highly unusual. It appears to keep time from 9 to 4 when any other analomatic sundial keeps time from 4 to 9. The reason for this is because it is aligned so that during the summer solstice, 9 a.m. on the sundial coincides with the celestial and ecliptic equators merging at 9 hours right ascension. Which happens in the constellation of Cancer. In the next video, I'll explain the importance of this and the significance of the eastern wall at the Coral Castle, which will put it all in perspective. Thank you for joining me. My name is R.L. Poole.